ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा श्रीमद भागवतम थर्ड कैंटो चैप्टर ट्वेंटी फाइव The Glories of Devotional Service, text 19. Na Jujjamanaya Bhaktya Bhagavati Akhilatmani Sadrisho Asti Sivaha Pantha Joginam Brahma Siddhaye Na Jujya Manaya Bhakta Bhagavat Akhilatmani Sadrishosti Shibopantha Joginam Brahma Siddhaye नायुज्यमानया भक्त्या भगवत तखिलात्मनि सद्रिशोस्ति शिव पंथा योगिनां ब्रह्मसिद्धये नायुज्यमानया भक्त्या भगवत तखिलात मनि सद्रिशोस्ति शिव पंथा योगिनां ब्रह्मसिद्धये ना नॉट जुज्जमानया बीइंग परफॉर्म्ड भक्तिया Devotional service, Bhagavati, towards the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Akhilatmani, the Super Soul, Sadrishaha, like, Asti, there is, Shivaha, auspicious, Pantha, Path, Yoginam of the Yogis, Brahma Siddhaye for perfection and self-realization. Translation by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada Perfection in self-realization cannot be attained by any kind of yogi unless he engages in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead for that is the only auspicious path. Please repeat after me. Perfection in self-realization cannot be attained by any kind of yogi unless he engages in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For that is the only auspicious path. Purport by Srila Prabhupada That knowledge and renunciation are never perfect unless joined by devotional service is explicitly explained here. Na Jujyamanaya means without being dovetailed. When there is devotional service, then the question is, where is to offer the service? Devotional service is to be offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the super soul of everything. For that is the only reliable path of self-realization or Brahman realization. The word Brahma Siddhai means to understand oneself to be different from matter to understand oneself to be Brahman. The Vedic words are Aham Brahmasmi 
The Vedic words are Aham Brahmasmi. Brahma Siddhi means that one should know that he is not matter. He is a pure soul. There are different kinds of yogis. But every yogi is supposed to engage in self-realization or Brahman realization. It is clearly stated here that unless one is fully engaged in devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one cannot have easy approach to the path of Brahma Siddhi. In the beginning of the second chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that when one engages himself in devotional service of Vasudev, spiritual knowledge and renunciation of the material world automatically become manifest. Thus, a devotee does not have to try separately for renunciation and knowledge. Devotional service itself is so powerful that by one's service attitude, everything is revealed. It is stated here, Shivaha Pantha. This is the only auspicious path for self-realization. The path of devotional service is the most confidential means for attaining Brahman realization. That perfection in Brahman realization is attained through the auspicious path of devotional service indicates that the so-called Brahman realization or realization of the Brahma Jyoti effulgence is not the Brahma Siddhi. Beyond that, beyond that Brahma Jyoti, there is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the Upanishads, a devotee prays to the Lord to kindly put, put aside the effulgence, Brahma Jyoti, so that the devotee may see within the Brahma Jyoti the actual eternal form of the Lord. Unless one attains realization of the transcendental form of the Lord, there is no question of bhakti. Hmm. I'll repeat this sentence. Unless one attains realization of the transcendental form of the Lord, there is no question of bhakti. Bhakti necessitates the existence of the recipient of devotional service and the devotee who renders devotional service. Brahma Siddhi through devotional service is realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The understanding of the effulgent rays of the body of the Supreme Lord is one of the perfect stages of Brahma Siddhi or Brahman realization. Nor is the realization of the Paramatma feature of the Supreme Person per, person is perfect. For Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is Akhilatma. He is the Super Soul. One who realizes the Supreme Personality realizes the other features namely the Paramatma feature and the Brahman feature and that total realization is Brahma Siddhi. Now Yujyamanaya Bhakta Bhagavat Akhilatmani Shadrishosti Shibo Pantha Joginang Brahma Siddhaye Perfection in self-realization cannot be attained by any kind of yogi unless he engages in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For that is the only auspicious path. So, <clears throat> this chapter uh, is dealing with the glories of devotional service as it has been presented by Kapila Dev to his mother. Step by step he is taking us to the highest platform of devotional service. Welcome Radha Chayam Prabhu. <laughs> Thank you.
and so uh, the the scientific understanding is a gradual development of uh, or gradual revelation of facts like we learn step by step everything we learn step by step like when we learn english language how did we learn we first learn the alphabet and then uh, we go higher into that aspect of knowledge uh, first we learn the alphabet then we learn the words uh, b at bat c at cat uh, then we learn grammar then you learned how to construct the sentences and in this way our knowledge developed and here also we are saying how systematically kapil dev is presenting the process of devotional service like it all started with his mother asking a simple question how to become free from the bondage of the material nature and uh, gradually uh, kapil dev revealed that how a living entity becomes entangled in the material nature or how a living entity exists in two stages one is in a bound stage or conditioned stage and the other is liberated stage so the bound stage is uh, bound one how is one bound in this material nature to bind uh, what do you need you need a rope and everyone is bound in this material nature with three ropes a golden rope <laughs> a silver rope and an iron rope uh, those uh, three different types of ropes are known as gunas actually uh, sanskrit the word guna uh, has the, the words guna have three two connotations one meaning of the guna is quality and the other meaning of the word guna is rope rasi so in this way a living entities are tied down to the material nature with the ropes of or with the modes of goodness passion and ignorance and whether this whether is goodness or whether is passion whether is ignorance it's a rope it's a cause of our bondage the phone call the way generate to chali the thing in classes so when you on the way jay generate chali so so this is what uh, the material nature is like so kapil dev explained that there are two stages one is a imprisoned stage and the other is liberated stage a free state when one is in the when one is affected by the three modes of material nature he is bound or he is conditioned and when he is not bound when he is free from the influence of the modes of material nature then he is in a liberated state liberated means at that time nothing is affecting him nothing is uh, nothing is obstructing his freedom he is free to do anything he wants liberated stage actually means that he is free to do anything he wants and condition stage is that his activities are restricted he can do only certain things in a certain way and what is the way uh, the way is very simple uh, as you act 
you will get the result. You act in a certain way, you are producing the result. And then uh, you are subjected to suffer or enjoy the result. So this suffering and enjoyment of your previous action uh, is the bondage. We are tied down to the material nature. As we are acting uh, accordingly, we are getting the results of our actions. Why is it? Uh, why is it so? Uh, because at, to be in the material nature means to act for our own sake. We are acting for our own sake, for our own pleasure. That means we are acting to enjoy uh, or suffer the results. When I act for myself, uh, that is the conditioning of the material nature. When I act for myself, then I am responsible to the reaction of those actions. But the free state means when you are acting on behalf of Krishna. When you act on behalf of Krishna or for the sake of Krishna, for the pleasure of Krishna, then uh, we are free to do whatever we want. Then there is no restriction. Nothing is actually stopping us uh, from our actions. That is the meaning of being free, being liberated. Why? Because we are not doing anything for ourselves. At that stage, a devotee simply does everything for the sake of Krishna's pleasure. And because Krishna is the supreme proprietor, everything can be done for Krishna's pleasure. That is the freedom that one experiences in the spiritual sky. And then, in this verse, he is actually pointing out. Anyway, maybe we can uh, uh, just uh, briefly what actually happens when one becomes liberated then uh, one, the soul can see himself to be transcendental to the material existence. And always that self is self-effulgent and never separated from the uh, Supreme Personality of Godhead, although he is minute in size. That is the liberated state. He is with the Lord. Uh, he is with the Lord experiencing uh, all the wonderful spiritual experiences with the Lord, acquiring the qualities of the Lord. Uh, but he is doing it in a minute way. He is minute. And uh, at that time, uh, he, uh, he practices, he becomes situated in knowledge and renunciation. Knowledge means uh, knowledge about the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his spiritual reality and he is detached from material nature. That is the meaning of Jnana and Vaidagya. Awareness of the Supreme Lord and detachment from material nature. And in, today, in today's verse, uh, it has been pointed out that that stage of liberation can be achieved. The self-realization can be achieved only through devotional service, not through any other process. All the other processes are yoga, other processes are trying to link one with the Lord. Uh, like Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Dhyana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, Raja Yoga. There are so many different types of Yogas. But without Bhakti, they are not Yogas. That's the main point. Karma, when Karma becomes Karma Yoga, is any Karma, huh? is Karma Yoga? Huh? So many people are working so hard from morning till night. But is there, is, are those people karma yogis? Will anybody situated in 
proper knowledge call them karma yogi no everyone is working so hard actually from morning till night you go like you'll see the houses are empty uh, everyone is working husband is working wife is working uh, children are working everyone is working so they are working they are doing karma but are they karma yogis why not what makes a karma or action karma yoga yes when the karma is performed but the result is offered to krishna uh, that is called karma so when krishna is the object of karma then it is karma yoga right which means karma plus bhakti is karma yoga uh, karma plus bhakti is karma yoga similarly gyana uh, there are so many institutions of acquiring knowledge do we call them gyana yogis the university so many students they are studying working so hard uh, in the colleges there are so many students in the schools there are so many students uh, they all are endeavoring to acquire gyana knowledge but is it can we call them gyana yogis why not because bhakti part is missing when gyana is blended with bhakti then it is gyana yoga nowadays meditation has become so popular especially in the west but do we call them <laughs> dhana yogis huh? no why not no, because that dhana is not meant or uh, not mixed with so that is the point that he is making here bhaktiya uh, na jujya manaya bhakta if it is not performed with devotional service the perfection of spiritual uh, spiritual uh, uh, perfection or perfection of self realization cannot be attained na jujya manaya no jujya manaya cannot be attained without bhakti so there are different types of processes different type of practices and they must be they must be executed for the pleasure of krishna or for the sake of serving krishna or in order to abide by krishna's instructions that is actually the service to krishna on the other hand we see that how any action any thing that we do can become devotional service for example arjun is fighting a battle it's a very ghastly battle very difficult battle like he had to kill his grandfather who loved him so dearly and whom he loved so dearly can you even think of somebody whom you love to even slap him uh-huh. can you think of doing that somebody who you love to hit him but here not a slap not to hit not just a hit but to kill that is what arjun had to do and he had to eventually do that he had to kill bhishma but it is devotional service why because it's for krishna's pleasure krishna's pleasure means krishna wanted him to fight arjun was not fighting for his sake arjun was fighting for krishna's sake krishna told arjun told at the beginning of bhagavad gita we have seen before the war actually began arjun didn't want to fight he dropped the bow and arrow and he says na yotsa iti govinda 
that Govinda, I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to fight this battle. So that is what Arjun situation. But then, uh, what 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 do we find at the end? This is the beginning of Bhagavad Gita. Arjun dropped the bow and arrow. And what is the end? What at the end of Bhagavad Gita? What do we see? Arjun is admitting Nashta Moha Smriti Labdha Tat Prashadat Maya That by your uh, Mercy, your prashada, uh, Krishna Archuta, uh, my moha has been removed. My moha has been destroyed. Nashto moha. Smriti Labdha, I have, rec- I have regained my memory. That means now I know what I need to do. And Sthito uh, Osmi Gato Sandeha. All my doubts are now dispelled. Karishya Vachanantava. I will do whatever you ask me to do. So this is devotional service. Karishya Vachanantava. Krishna has given so many instructions in Bhagavad Gita. To act according to those instructions is devotional service. Like we can begin, huh? Man, human, uh, say we can see what is the goal of human life, what should be done in the human life, he, as a, in the human form of life. Annad bhavanti bhutani, parjannad anna sambhava, jagyat bhavati parjanna, jagya karma samud. So very systematically Krishna is saying, you, in order to survive, you need food. Right? And how the food is generated, how the food is produced? Because of the rain. Why the rain is pr- produced? Because of Jagya. Uh, and therefore, everyone must perform Jagya. Now this is one of the initial instructions. And then we find uh, in the 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is telling, of all the jagyas, I am japo, japo jagyas. Of all the jagyas, I am chanting the holy name. So, what you, what you have been asked to do? To perform the sacrifice, the best kind of sacrifice, japo jagyas. Uh, then Krishna is saying, man mana bhav, with your mind you think of me. Krishna is giving so many different instructions. With your man, 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 mana bhavo, man bhakto, man jaji, man namaskuru. That is Krishna's simple instruction. And how to please Krishna? Jat karosi, jadasnasi, jat juhosi, dadasi jat, japat jat, tapushoshi, konteya, tat kurushamadar. See how systematically Krishna is giving the instruction. Whatever you do, even whatever you eat, whatever you offer in sacrifice, whatever you give in charity, do it for me. Tat kurusha madar Offer them to me. Do it for my sake. Or do it as an offering to me. You have to act. Act on my behalf. Act for my sake. You have to eat. Okay, first offer the food to me. And then Krishna's demands are not very much. Krishna is making such simple conditions. Patram pushpam phalam toyam jome bhakta prajachati. Well, you are a poor man or you are a miser. You don't want to spend money on my <laughs> sake. <laughs> Okay, fine, offer me some uh, fruits, some leaves. But make sure that leaf is, leaf is tulasi leaf. But if you don't have anything, uh, then you can also uh, offer some leaf to Krishna. Krishna will take it. Uh, some leaf, patram, pushpam, some flowers, falam, some fruits. 
toyam, some water, even some water, if you don't have anything to offer, just offer some water to Krishna. But how to offer? Bhakti uparhitam ashnami, I will accept it. Offer it with bhakti, I will accept. And then finally Krishna is giving the, uh, the instruction, the final instruction, the most important of all the instructions. Sarva dharman parittajya mamekam sharanam. You are a very good person, you are very nicely situated in the path of dharma, uh, but don't worry, give up all those dharma. You are a very good Hindu. You don't have to become a Hindu. Just surrender and die. You are a very good Muslim. You don't have to be a Muslim. You surrender and die. You are a Christian. You are a Jew. Or you are a very good social worker. You are a very big politician. You are a very good big businessman. Sarva dharman, all that dharmas that you have, Sarva dharman parittajya. You are a very good lawyer. <laughs> Sarva dharman parittajya, ma me kam sharanam. Just surrender unto me. So that is the final word. Surrender unto me. And this surrender is actually bhakti. The, without surrender, they cannot be bhakti. Surrender. Surrender to Krishna, uh, but surrendering to Krishna is difficult. Surrender to therefore surrender to surrender through Krishna's devotees. Krishna has made this process himself. Kaunteya pratijani hi name bhakta pranashyati. Krishna is giving the assurance, not directly, but through his devotee, so that people can understand that it is through the devotee that he will have to approach him. Those who think that they are my devotees, they are not my devotees. Those who are my devotees' devotees, they are my actual devotees. Now, why is that? Why is that? Because that is the way Krishna has designed it. Spiritual sky is a law is a far is far far away. We can't approach the spiritual sky ourselves. Therefore, Krishna's agent is here. Make your approach through. Krishna's agents are here. Make your approach. Prabhupada gives so many beautiful examples in that respect. One class, a very beautiful example in that respect is a letter box. You wrote a letter meant to go to America. The letter is meant to be delivered in America. But in the street corner, there is a red little box. You put the letter in there, in that letter box, in that and in course of time the letter will reach America. One may say, well, this is a, just a static box here. Now how is it going to deliver? Had it been at least a motor car, I could have dropped the letter there. I could have been, I could have rest in peace that maybe that car will take the letter to America. But it's some, just one little red box uh, standing, never moves from there. <laughs> Now, how is this letter going to deliver? Uh, how is my letter going to be delivered in America? But the system is there. Uh, nowadays, I don't... Do they have letterbox anymore? <laughs> I don't see them. Like we used to... I remember when we were young, in every street corner, they used to be... In, in our street, I remember there were two letterboxes. 
one in the middle one in the end and the other ones in the <laughs> and <coughs> there used to be a time written in a white piece of paper uh, 3.30 so that means at 3.30 the letter will be cleared the letters will be cleared so postman would come and he would open the thing and take all the letters and then what he would do he would deposit it to the post office and post office they will sort it out uh, like some letters are from for Delhi some letters are for India and some letters are for abroad so they will go into two different departments uh, and those who are meant for foreign countries they will be sorted out some are for Europe some are for America some are for Australia and so forth so just as the postal system uh, has this arrangement, Krishna also has this arrangement. And that arrangement is uh, the process, is the disciplic succession. Uh, that is the uh, authoritative criteria. Disciplic succession. This, the, there are uh, Four channels. Brahma's channel, Lakshmi's channel, Lord Shiva's channel, and four Kumara's channel. Brahma, Shri, Rudra, and Kumar Sampradaya. These are four Sampradayas. And uh, there is a link. And through that link, through the link of the disciplic succession, yes, the appeal or the letter will reach Krishna. Your message will reach Krishna. You are surrendering to uh, the representative of Krishna through the disciplic succession. And uh, what is actually happening when you are surrendering to a disciplic succession? You are getting the teachings of the disciplic succession. That is how you are getting to know Krishna. That is the meaning of the disciplic succession. Unbroken chain of informations. Those informations are there. Uh, from the beginning of creation, Krishna gave this knowledge to Lakshmi. Krishna gave this knowledge to Brahma. Shankarshan gave the knowledge to the Kumaras. And also Shankarshan gave the knowledge to Lord Shiva. So this is how the disciplic successions have been established. Through Krishna, through Narayan, through Shankarshan. And this knowledge is being transmitted throughout the world even today. Although time has passed so many times. Years, so many millions, so many billions, so many zillions of years have gone by, but the knowledge is still available. In some cases, the knowledge has become even more magnified, just in case of uh, Brahma Madhva Gauriya Sampradaya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and gave something which was not given before. So, <clears throat> the distance is not making the knowledge obscure, but the distance is making the knowledge enhanced. And in this respect, one very beautiful example is that a telescope. With your, with your naked eyes, you cannot see the distant luminaries, the stars and planets, they are far, far away, many stars and planets. How do you see them? Uh, through the telescope. What is there in the telescope? Lenses. What are the lenses doing? They are enhancing, they are magnifying the object. And more the lenses, more powerful is the telescope. Normally, if something is between my eye and the object, it will obscure my vision. 
But what is the what are the lenses and the telescope doing? They're enhancing my vision, and that is the meaning of uh, the disciplic succession being the transparent via media. They're not only transparent; they're enhancing. So such a wonderful process, uh, but. Uh, it must be practiced in a proper way. And what is the uh, what is the secret? The secret is bhaktiya, devotional service. Without bhakti, it won't work. And what the disciplic successions are reminding us: uh, become a devotee of Krishna. Become a bhakti. become a devotee of Krishna, then everything will become clear. Now, this bhakti aspect we can think of in two ways. One is that bhakti is the license to be in somebody's house. You can, uh, there is a very rich man if you want to stay in his house, in his big palace, what do you have to do? You have to either become his friend uh, or you have to be submissive to him, you have to serve him. Uh, if you become his servant, uh, then the rich man will be very happy with you and ask you, come and stay with me. If you, if you can please the person, by your service, then that very rich man will allow you to stay in his house. And in his house, when you are in his house, you can actually enjoy the way he is enjoying. You can live in this palace, you can eat the delicious food that he is eating. Only consideration is that you have to become submissive to him. You have to serve him. And uh, so this is the criteria. And this, this it's, although it may begin with service, but the relationship may develop. Uh, you may get promoted. That rich man, uh, say if the rich man doesn't have any heir, any successor, and he likes you, you have been so good to him, then he says, look, you become my son. I will accept you as my adopted son. I will adopt you as my son. And now, by being adopted by the rich man's son, you inherit his property. Although your consideration was that how can I live in the rich man's house and now the rich man is giving you his, all his wealth, all his property. Or that rich man can say that, look, I am so lonely. Uh, I need some friends so you become my friend so in this way the rich man can award you all kinds of wonderful situations which will enable you to stay with him in a most wonderful way so bhakti actually means that uh, to, be, to develop uh, a favorable relationship with Krishna he is not only the rich man he is the richest of all people he is not only a king but he is the king of kings so so that is the main consideration for being allowed to stay in a in a in certain favorable situation you have to be submissive to the person, to the owner of that property. Now here, who, are to, who we are talking about? We are talking about Krishna, the supreme personality of God. Another way to look at bhakti is like you go to, you want to go to some country. Now you may have your own jet. 
to fly or you may have your own ship or you can even huh, row a boat and go there. Will you be able to stay there? Why not? Because you don't have a visa. Without a visa, you won't be allowed to enter into that country. What is the visa? Visa is the approval by that nation, by that country, uh, that would allow you to stay there. So all different processes are, they may be uh, the process that would take us to the spiritual sky. But bhakti is the visa. Unless you the, have the visa given by the authority of that country, you won't be allowed to enter into that. So that's why always it has been pointed out. Bhakti, bhaktiya tu anandaya shakti. Bhakta maam abhijanati. Bhakto si me sakhachiti. Rahusam hiyetu dhukta. And here also the same word, bhakta. Na jujjamanaya bhakta. Bhagavat akhilatmani. Sadrisho sti shivopantha. Jogina Brahma Siddhai. Therefore, those who are properly situated in knowledge, we will, will adopt this process of bhakti in order to develop one's really loving relationship with Krishna and in order to be able to reside with Krishna in the spiritual sky in order to be favorably disposed towards Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Gaur Premanandi. Does anybody? Yes? Well, you have mentioned that there are different channels of this big subsidy. Prabhupada belongs to which of these channels? Number one question. Number two question is, uh, where are the other three uh, yeah, very good. You see, Prabhupada's line uh, is Brahma Sampradaya. The knowledge that was given to Brahma at the beginning of creation by Krishna. Uh, and in this line, Madhvacharya came. You see, at the due to the influence of Kali, this Sampradaya has become contaminated. The knowledge became lost. So Madhvacharya revived that. Sampradaya. Just as Arj Krishna through Arjun revived in Bhagavad Gita the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. And then about 500 years ago Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and accepted the same Sampradaya. Therefore this Sampradaya is known as Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya Sampradaya. Achha, other Sampradayas are like Lakshmi Sampradaya is Sri Sampradaya which is very prominent in South India, South India, Sri Rangam. That is the main center, Sri Sampradaya. Then uh, Rudra Sampradaya is Nimbargacharya. Just as Madhvacharya revived uh, the Brahma Sampradaya, Nimbargacharya re revived the Kumar Sampradaya. And then there is uh, Rudra Sampradaya, Lord, the Sampradaya of Lord Shiva. This Sampradaya was revived by Vishnu Swami. So these are, this is how the four Sampradayas are pre pre prevalent. Where are these two Sampradayas? They are all, they are everywhere, but the seat, general seat for that, I mean, Nimbarga Sampradaya is there quite prominent in Vrindavan. And <clears throat> Vishnu Swami, you know, I don't know really. Uh, they, they, are, they, are, they are in holy places, they have their seats. But these two Sampradaya, Madhva Sampradaya and Sri Sampradaya, they are predominantly in South, South India. They are very prominent in South India. But they are in other places also. Like uh, uh, Sri Sampradaya have their temples in Vrindavan also. 
like in just take a replica of Sri Rangam temple in go, next to Gopinath Bazaar. So they are everywhere. In you go to uh, Jagannath Puri, you will find uh, they have their sampradaya. So in their philosophy also, Krishna consciousness. Their uh, bhakti, all four sampradayas are bhakti, but uh, they are. Uh, they may not be directly worshipping Krishna. Like Sri Sampradaya is worshipping Narayan. Uh, Mahaprabhu used to joke with uh, uh, Bengal Bhatte when Mahaprabhu was in South India. Like your Lakshmi, she is the Patibrata Shiromani. But why she is running after Krishna? <laughs> So, so in this way, you know, he was pointing out that, you know, like the, pre, the prominence of Krishna above Narayan. And then eventually, uh, they were uh, actually, Benkat Bhatta's son is Gopal Bhatta Goswami, who, be, who became one of the Goswami. So this is how, like all, see, this is the the uh, the uh, uniqueness of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's gift. The destination of other four sampradayas is Vaikuntha. They don't have access to Vrindavan. It is only through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that one can enter into Vrindavan. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also. Uh, accepted two aspects of these four sampradayas <coughs> into his teaching. His presentation accepted two aspects of each sampradaya. <coughs> like from Ramanuja sampradaya, he took the deity worship and service. In this way, I don't remember, like from different <coughs> Sampradayas he has taken. Yes, Jamuna Priya? Yeah, yeah, sure. This particular verse? I see, okay. Yeah. I'll just read. Huh? Perfection in self-realization cannot be attained by any kind of yogi unless he engages in devotional service of Supreme Personality of Godhead. For that is the only auspicious path. Yeah, sorry, but my mistake. It was in the purport, actually. Huh? Oh, in the purport. In the, yeah. One line in the purport which you repeated, which said that unless one attains realization uh, of the transcendental form of the Lord, there is no yeah, right. <coughs> no, I mean, to any bhakti, you have to accept the form of the Lord. Unless you accept, unless you accept Him as a person, where is the question of bhakti? I, I was confused because it said, unless one attains realization of the transcendental form, so what does that mean? That accepting that the Lord is a person, that He is a form, then only comes the question of service. You can't serve Brahma Jyoti, right? Can you serve the light bulbs? <laughs> so that's the point. <laughs> yes. I see. <coughs> Well, Jat Karosi, whatever you are doing, uh, do it either directly or indirectly for Krishna. Like in your case, maybe you can say that you cannot do it directly for Krishna. But you can indirectly do it uh, by saying, the, you are, why you are working? You are working to get the, why you are teaching? 
to get the, to get some money <laughs> so you can give a part of your income to krishna that is how you can or you know like in school when you are serving in school but the other times that you have you can do something for krishna even in school you can teach the students you know the glory of krishna krishna consciousness you can preach to the teachers huh? so this is how you can take advantage of that situation and uh, serve krishna right yes archana Uh, did, uh, did, did I mention about two ways or yes, two ways of bhakti? Two ways of bhakti. The first example was the one who just wants to leave the house. Okay, place. okay. No, of the two examples that I gave in that respect is like you develop a relationship with the person, the lord of the house, and that way you are allowed to stay in the palace of that person. right if you want to stay uh, with a very i mean in say you are there is a very rich man and you are attracted to stay in his house then the way to do it is through uh through developing a relationship with him actually these are the examples i was giving the two examples in that respect of bhakti and the other one is going to a country without having the visa <clears throat> in order to go to the country you have to have the visa no matter whoever you are uh, even though you may have you know your own plane still to enter into the country you need a visa so that is and that visa is the approval and that approval can be obtained only by devotional service when it comes to spiritual context okay thank you all very much all glories to shri prabhupada gold premanandi